Good morning, everyone. Hello. <laughs> We're so few in number, but we are strong in spirit, right? Large in spirit, yes. Would you we invite you to stand this morning? Our God has proven himself over and over again in scripture, in our hearts and lives, and not in small ways. The book of Job says that he does great, unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Our mouths are open in praise, God. Our hearts are ready to proclaim. Let's sing together.
Well, good morning. It is so good to see you. Let's have a seat. We'll talk about some announcements. We are so glad that you are here and not on vacation like everybody else. <laughs> I must say, you should have been able to say hello to everyone this morning. So you should have gotten about 40 hugs, 50 hugs, at least. At least. Well, we're so glad you're here. If you are a new guest with us, we'd like you to fill out a yellow connection card so we can get to know you a little bit better. And today is our Connection Center Day. Uh, so stop by after service if you're new to the church well, within the last month or so, and we will uh, meet with the pastors and kind of get to know you a little bit better. And uh, you have a free resource available out there to help with discipleship. And then this week, I know last week we had it in the bulletin. This week it's out on the Welcome Center. It's our bike safety night. We have Clay Fire Department coming to do a bike safety presentation. And our children and the community children, so this is a community event, to help them understand bike safety. And we're going to kind of minister to our community in this way. So here's the thing. I only have two kids pre-registered so far. So I'm not canceling. We're doing this, guys. So your job is to grab one of these from the Welcome Center and text it to your neighbors and be like, this is a free community event, but you have to pre-register. So we want to get out there and reach our community, right? We want to reach our community. So this is one way that we're doing it this summer. So if you can help us out, if you have neighbors with kids or you have neighbors with grandkids, get this out to them this week. Uh, it's going to be Wednesday night from 6 to 7.30. The code here takes them to the form to fill out. So that's available on the Welcome Center as well as the announcement slide and on Facebook as well on our events. And then also coming up this week, next Sunday we have Cole uh, the Cole family, uh, Vidal and Marie, they're missionaries in Sierra Leone in the West Anglophone area of Africa. We're excited to get to know them a little bit more. I got to spend a good afternoon with them working on stuff at General Assembly. They are so much fun, so much fun to get to know and hear what God is doing over in West Africa. And so I want to encourage you to come next Sunday and bring some friends, but here's the thing for that too. We need you to sign up to bring a side dish. And it's important that you do that today because Sue is going to take that poster home today and that's how she's going to order the chicken for next week. So we want to make sure we have enough for you and your loved ones that are coming. So make sure you sign up. The form is right outside the sanctuary here on the wall. You can see what options are available, but the NMI is providing the meat. And so we just need everyone to participate with the salads and things and the sides so that way we can have a great picnic, all-American picnic, next Sunday. So we're excited about our missionaries and spending time with them. And then let's see, oh, it is going to be VBS in the month of July. Who is excited about VBS? I love VBS. It's so fun. If you go to the children's department right now and start walking up their stairs, they have a barn on the stairs. It's really cute. So you should at least check that out. They're doing um, Hey Day is the name of the VBS. So every Sunday, starting on July 16th, they will have, uh, during the morning worship hour, their vacation Bible school. So it'll be a really great time. So if you can help with that, see Brenda, or if you have ideas and you want to be part of the ministry, uh, talk with Pastor Brenda. I'm sure she would appreciate some assistance there. Uh, there might be some other things in the bulletin. I'll let you check those out. But if you're looking for the online bulletin, it'll be up later today. We were a little slow. Oh, it's up. Forgive me. Late breaking news. And actually, in your, in your pews, there is now a green card that will show you two different QR codes to make it easier so you don't have to search for it. The bulletin as well as the connection card. So that's something new in your pew racks today. So I figured I'd show that to you so you can show new people. Well, if that's it, I'm going to have our ushers come for this morning's tithes and offerings. And let's pray. Mommy. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to continue in worship. We just ask that you bless our church, Lord, and touch each one, the, the gift and the giver and those that can't give. And Lord, we just ask that you help it to further the ministry here around South Bend and, Lord, around the world. We just thank you and we praise you for this opportunity to participate. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's continue in worship. We're going to stand as we also worship him through our tithes and offerings, giving him everything we are and everything we have. I love him so much.
and our Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. He says, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. God's people have echoed this truth through the ages, and we are proclaiming it still today. Even as Paul wrote in his letter to the Corinthians, he said, There is one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom we are all things, and through whom we exist. We're going to sing about this truth.
Let us pray. Father God, we think of who you are this morning. You are our life giver, our sustainer, creator, father, our sacrifice. The one who lives so that we could live. You've been there through every moment of every time. And you've been there through every moment of our lives. You see us. You are God. We don't quite know how to completely fathom all that you are. We can give you names. We can ascribe attributes. But you're more than that. So this morning, Lord, in each of our hearts, in each of our spirits, we call you the God of who we are right now and what we're going through. Because, Lord, we need you. Hmm. Oh, how much we need you. From the one who needs to control our thoughts to the one who who's holding back praise to the one who thinks that the dollar is more important than our gift to you. We need you and we need your forgiveness. We need your holiness. We need your presence. We need your closeness. We need you to fill up those empty spaces in our lives. We need you to go through those spaces that we've cluttered up with stuff. Clean it out. Take residence right there. Be there. For we know, Father, when we give you these areas, when we surrender that part of our lives that we've been holding back, there is new peace. There is no new joy. And we can thank you for the things you have given to us. We can thank you for our wives and our husbands. We can thank you for our children and grandchildren. We can thank you for our moms and dads. We can thank you for that job. We can thank you for the homes that we live in, for the meals that we have, for the, for the work that we do. Even in the middle of difficult times, we can have your peace. Because we thank you for all these things and for all these people in our lives. And Lord, we, we bring to you our needs this morning. We pray, Lord, you would provide everything that we need to serve you. And that we would use them for your service. We want to thank you for watching over Michaela this week and for Lord touching her. We thank you, God, for, for Julie Brown. We pray, Lord, you would reach upon her that you would touch Ed Brown. That you would be with Nancy Mills for the Dodd family, for Melanie Kahn, for Len Holt, for Mary Polis, for Ava Barkinson, Barkston, Toby Braun, for Ava and Joe, and for many other needs that are on our, our list and also in our hearts this morning, men and women who need to know you, who need a touch from you, who need to be healed, to need to be encouraged. 
We pray, Father, for our, for our leaders, from the leaders in our church who are, who are constantly sacrificing for you and for us. We pray that you would touch them. For the leaders in our community, from firemen and, and policemen to aldermen and, and mayor, we pray, Lord, you would touch them and give them an understanding of what is wise and what is good. To be with leaders in our in our governments, whether they be a state or or federal, that Lord, you would begin a new work in our country, a work that says we don't care what we think; we want to know what you think. We want to know what God wants. And first, we pray that their hearts would be given to you. We don't pray that often. But we know that there's senators and there's presidents and there's leaders and there's governors and state legislators and men and women who need to know you. And we pray, Father, use us, use your people, your word to lead them into a relationship with you. For, Lord, that is what we're here for, to have a relationship with you. We give you praise and we pray that you would be with our speaker of the morning. Let your word come from him. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Got a question for you. Is this the best Sunday you've had all week? It may as well be, guess what? It's the only Sunday you're going to get this week. And so it might as well be. Uh, and so uh, I'm thrilled to be with you today. And uh, my main prayer is that God receives glory today. That's why we're here, to encourage one another to bring God great, great glory. A guy by the name of uh, Joel Arthur Barker once said this. Vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision, it just passes the time. But vision with action can change the world. And so my question is, are you content with the way the world is? Or do you want to change the world? And I'm going to stand here till you give me an answer. So you want to change the world. I'm glad to hear that. Now, uh, I don't think that I'm going to surprise anyone when I make this next statement. The world that we live in is a mess. Would you agree with that? A lot of junk going on. There's some good things going on. And I, I love praising the Lord for those good things. But our world's a mess. And so, church, that's why we cannot afford to coast into the future unprepared. We must be ready because God desires that. God is worthy of that. And so my friends, we need to live deliberate, careful, and especially God-inspired lives. And so sometimes we sit back and we say, hmm, I'd like to, but how's that possible anyway? Well, guess what? God has an answer. In his own word, he said this. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus. Why? So that with one heart, with one mouth, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I thought about that and I just came up with one word. Wow! We serve a God who gives endurance. We think we can't go on, but God says, yes, you can because I'm going to hold you up. We need encouragement because we're down and God said, I'll lift you up. We want unity and we find that unity in none other than Jesus Christ. And we want to glorify God in everything we do, in everything we say. And guess what? 
There's one simple way to get that done. We do it by following the lead of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I would say God doesn't just have a plan. God has an incredible plan. And so my advice is simple. As a church, let's focus on those verses as we look toward the future, as we try to change the world, no matter what it might bring. Now today I want to uh, do something that's unusual for me. Usually I have, I'll call it a three-point sermon. Well, I said three's not enough. So today I'm going to have a four-point sermon. Aren't you excited? And I shouldn't preach for more than two or three hours. You're laughing. Okay, that's all right. And so uh, here's what we're going to do. First of all, we need to understand that we must put our gifts to work. There's a lot of stuff going on, but no matter what may be happening in our world, whether it's a tornado or if you're down in Florida, they're getting ready for a hurricane, or maybe it's an earthquake or, or some personal tragedy of some sort. There's lots of stuff going on. But my friends, you must never, ever put loving God and loving people on hold. That is essential. I love the way the old song puts it. used to sing this song a lot. I haven't sung it much in years. But it says, people need the Lord. They just don't want a Lord. They need the Lord. And my friend, that's never, ever, ever going to change. And so we must, yes, church, we must follow God's lead and look for ways to reach people, to help them get connected to Almighty God. You see, God has a purpose for each one of our lives. There's something that God wants every single one of us to be doing in this church to reach people. It's not just Pastor Andy's job or or Pastor Christina or Pastor uh, Brenda's or Pastor Rebecca's. It's all of our work to reach the lost for Jesus. And so, if we'll just simply pay attention to God's lead, let Him be in the forefront, it will be as plain as plain can be as we go about life. Exactly what it is that God has and plans in store for us to do. Do you believe that? I believe it. And so sometimes we say, well, all I can do is pray. I used to say that once in a while. Well, it's not just all you can do is pray. You can say, praise the Lord, I get to pray. And here's some things we can pray about. We want to do your will, O God, not our will. And wants to be all day, every day. That's the way it needs to be. Show us what you want us to do, and we'll do it. Teach us to keep your commandments. Let us not follow the foolish counsel and devices of our own hearts. They get us in trouble. Let us lean into your understanding and not ours. We need to incline our hearts toward God. We need to find ways to follow Him, to bring Him glory, to follow His commandments. And so in everything we do, that's right, everything we do, we must please God. We must be about glorifying His name. If there's something that we're wanting to do and we're saying, I'm not sure if I'd be doing it, should be doing that, ask yourself the question, does this bring glory to God? If it doesn't, don't do it. It's that simple. And so the question is, as a church, where do we start? Well, it's simple. We start by everyone, again, using a supernatural gift that God has given us. And how often do we use them? Every chance we get. And sometimes we're going to be using them when we don't even know we're using them. I I recently uh, preached a sermon about the gifts of God. And uh, I went to a woman afterwards and she said, you know, I don't think I'm gifted in anything. I said, I disagree with you. You are extremely gifted with the, with the power to encourage people. And she's really, really good at it. I said, you've encouraged me several times today. And so never tell me there's nothing I can do. God has gifted you. So use that gift. And if it's not like Jerry's or Clint's or Rebecca's or Jim's or even Jake over there or my wife's, 
It's okay. God's going to use your gift for His glory. And in Romans 12, we find some incredible examples of gifts. And what I want you to do, are you comfortable in your seats right now? Are you? Well, when I mention this particular gift, if you think you have that gift, I want you to stand up. How does that make you feel? A little nervous? Okay. If your gift is prophesying, stand up. Some of you are not paying attention because I know some of you have that gift. That's proclaiming the word and the will of God. And so do it in accordance to your faith. God's given you the faith that you need. God's given you everything you need to proclaim Him. Okay, we've got... Just don't, don't sit down. I didn't tell you to sit down, brother. <laughs> okay. If you have the gift of serving, stand up. I know some of you do because you, you're good at it. Look at that. Wow, you're better at serving than you are at prophesying. Wow, okay. Well, if you have that gift... Make sure you use it. Serve. Okay. Have any teachers with us this morning? I know we do. Come on, if you're a teacher, stand up. Yep. Well, then teach, because that's important. Okay. Do we have any encouragers here this morning? I know we do, because you've encouraged me before. Then you know what you need to do? Give that encouragement. Use it for God's glory. Do we have any givers here this morning? I think we do. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about giving for God's glory. Then give it generously. As if everything depends on you, but knowing that it depends upon God. How about leaders? Do we have any leaders here this morning? If you're a parent, you're a leader, so you can stand up. Okay. Well, guess what you need to do if you're a leader? You do it diligently. You do it regularly. You do it often. How about showing mercy? Are, it, are any of you good at showing mercy? I know some of you are because you've shown mercy again to me and my wife. Well, guess what? You don't do it with a long face. You do it cheerfully. And so I'm looking about and I say, wow. We have everything we need because God's given us these gifts and we can do it to bring Him glory. We can do it to reach people for Christ. Okay, Rick, you can sit down now. Everyone else can too, for that matter. You know, I, I thought about uh, those gifts. And uh, in the very next verse, it adds something that's extremely important when it comes to using these gifts that God has given you. Love must be sincere. You see, in other words, we just don't talk about love. We just don't go to class and learn about love. We don't want to learn just what God is or, or what love is and what love does not do. Uh, uh, we don't even just say, I love you, and then walk away. Because our lives begin to overflow with genuine, God-inspired love. And people will know, you must be a Christian. You must go to church. You must do all those things. You must be a godly person because you love like God loves. My friends, I want you to know that God gives every Christian, and yes, a Christian includes you, a very special gift. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember when I was a child, I really liked Christmas because we didn't get a lot of gifts when I was growing up. But on Christmas, we always got a gift. Notice I didn't say gifts. We got a gift. And I loved getting those things. I was always so excited. But then I grew up and I found out that God gives us a gift that makes my little toy gun seem pale. <laughs> and so we need to understand those things. We need to just really overflow with love because they're special. Every single one of us, yes, every single one of us has some kind of gift. You know, uh, this past week, I hadn't read it yet, but I read uh, the church's annual report. 
and it excited me. It brought a smile to my face because I said, wow, there's a lot of things that are happening for the glory of God. There are people using their gifts left and right, and it's making a difference. And we need to continue to do that. But all of that said, I want to give you a little bit of a warning right now. There's going to be times when using those gifts, well, they're going to make you nervous. They're going to make you a little uncomfortable. And unfortunately, something that goes along with being uncomfortable is a four-letter word, fear. How many of you are afraid of something? Okay, and when I say three, I want you to just shout out what you're afraid of. One, two, three. Wow, I couldn't understand any of you, but that's okay. My friends, I want you to know in those times, when you think that using the gift that God is giving you is just making you too uncomfortable, that you can't do it because it makes you afraid, then I want you to think about a cross. I want you to look at a cross. And I want you to ask yourself the question, just how comfortable was Jesus on His cross? He suffered. He bled. He died. Now I'm going to talk more about that later, but first I want want to, to talk about fear. Everyone, every one of us has something that we're afraid of. But when it comes to serving God, when it comes to changing our world, we have to stand up to our fears. Isaiah Isaiah is a verse that uh, came to me unexpectedly. I was uh, something I do on Facebook and Twitter and and MeWe accounts every day. I I add a, a verse of the day and it helps me. And the verse that I had chosen for that day, and I chose it some time ago, was Isaiah 41.10. And I had just gone to the doctor and got some news I didn't particularly want. And to be honest, it made me a little bit fearful. And so I read that verse and I said, wow, you knew ahead of time that was going to happen. I have no need to be fear. This is what it says. Do not be afraid. Why? For I am with you. What a promise of God. Do not be disheartened. Why? For I'm your God. Wow, what a promise. He, then he adds these promises. I'll strengthen you. I'll help you. I'll hold you up with my righteous right hand. Wow. That's exciting. I don't know how it makes you feel, but it excites me. And it brought a peace over my life that was just incredible. I thought about some instances, one in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament. I was thinking a little bit about Joshua and the Israelites when they were about to enter the promised land. Uh, What was it that God would tell them that they were going to need when they were going to do it? I thought about that. Did, uh, Did they say, we need a plan for how to pay for this war we're going to? Nope, didn't need that. How about a great army? No, they didn't really need that. They already had one. It was God and them. Then what was it? God told them to do two things. Be strong and be courageous. As a matter of fact, he would later tell Joshua, be very strong and very courageous. Remember when I said that we lived in an evil world? You remember that? Does it leave you in fear sometimes? Does it say, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Well, my friends, get over that fear because God is with us. So we can be strong. We can be courageous as we face the future. Not because of us, but because of Almighty God. Here's another example. You know, sometimes we think we have it tough. uh, But the earliest church uh, was under some extreme persecution. Now, to, to, to spite the, uh, the persecutions and the threats, the disciples were going to the temple every single day, and you know what they were doing? They were sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, eventually, 
Because they were doing that, Peter and John were called on the carpet, and here's what they were told. You need to stop talking about that Jesus guy. He's a dead man. Stop it. And so the church got word of that, and what did they do? Well, they prayed. Um, so what did they pray for? Give us a better building. No, they didn't pray for that. Give us a better preacher. (laughs) No, they didn't ask for that either. We need better programs that will help us. Did they ask for that? Nope, didn't ask for that either. Then exactly what did they ask for? They asked for boldness. Wow. My friends, that is just so, so, so important. My friends, we have to be bold when it comes to serving Jesus, when it comes to telling our friends and our neighbors and our family about Jesus, because in the end, when the trumpet sounds, nothing's going to matter more than if you were with Jesus. Nothing matters more. So think about that and do something about it. But you know something else that uh, we need to do when uh, kind of goes along with facing down our fears? And when we face the future, and this is what it is. And I'm going to ask you a personal question. Are you willing to suffer? Hmm. You see, after Peter made his good confession by acknowledging that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus told him exactly what it means to really believe that statement. Here's what Jesus said. If anyone, and that includes you, would follow me, would come after me, he must deny himself. He must take up his cross and follow who? Follow me. And so are you following just a man? Are you following a woman? Or are you following Jesus? My friends, we cannot change the world until we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know what he wants from you, get into his word. Because the answers are there. Now Paul made that kind of commitment. Oh, not not at first. He was out persecuting the church, trying to kill off those nasty Christians. But God appeared to him. And Jesus changed his life. And so did Paul have a nice, easy life? Do we expect a nice, easy life when we accept Christ, when we become a Christian? Well, here's some of the things Paul went through. He was beaten and flogged. Have any of you been flogged lately? Nope, didn't think so. He was unjustly thrown in prison. Any of you face any of that? Maybe you have, I don't know. He was even stoned. They tried to kill the guy. Even though he was shipwrecked, nothing would change him. Even though he went without sleep and he went without food. Even though there were times he had to literally run for his life. So why would he put up with all that? He suffered because he loved God above everything. But he didn't just love God, he loved people. And that's why he was willing to suffer. And so I would ask you the question, just how much do you love God? Just how much do you love people? Are you willing to suffer for them? I've heard heard people say, I'd take a bullet for my family. Well, so be it if that's what it takes. You know, throughout the Bible, we're told that... uh, God gives us this incredible gift. He he gives us lots and lots and lots of joy and peace. How many of you wouldn't mind having some joy and peace? Would you like some of that? Yeah, I would too. Well, those are things that God wants for us. At the same time, He does not want us to become unaware of or immune to suffering. And according to Romans 15, 13, the glue that keeps joy... And peace in our lives, no matter what it is that happens, 
no matter how we suffer, is hope. Oh, not hope that it doesn't rain on our picnic. Hope that understanding that Jesus is the Son of God and that He's real and that He works in us and through us to save us. I love what it says in Romans 15, 13. It says, may the God of hope, the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace. It's a great prayer. Ask for it. He'll give it to you. How does it happen? As you trust in Him, it says. Why? So that you may overflow with hope. How? How? By the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that hope that you have in Jesus, it overflows from your life. You reek of it. It's going to make you strong. It's going to make you courageous. It's going to help you overcome your fears. My friends, when Christians respond to human suffering, one of the things that we sometimes do uh, is, how can I help? You ever ask that question to someone? How can I help you? Hmm. Well, I, there's lots of ways we can help. But the bef, best help we give can give is to offer hope that is found in Jesus Christ. That's eternal hope. That's forever hope. That's the kind of hope that cancels all the fears that we have. I guess I'm behind in my slides, aren't I? That's okay. My friends, we have answers and People need some of those answers. We, they really do. There are people right here in this community, maybe right in this church, maybe they're your next door neighbor who are living in poverty and they don't know how to break out of it. You have answers. There are people who want good marriages but they don't know where to start. My friends, you have good marriages. You know where to start. There are people living among us who desperately want to turn their back on their sinful way of life. They want to learn how to be a, a devoted follower of Jesus, but they just don't know how. Well, guess what? God has gifted you to know the answers. He's put the answers right here in this book. And so we need to be students of the Word. We need to know what God says. And we can help those people. We can extend the hope that only comes through Jesus. And so in regards to that, it's important that we respond to people the same way that we respond to someone who might be trapped under a burning car. Hmm. We do it by giving. We do it by praying. We do it by helping. And so let's not become so wrapped up in the details of our own lives that we become totally oblivious to the, to the suffering of the others. I love what the Apostle Paul told young Timothy, the young preacher. He said this, Join with me in suffering for the gospel. Hmm. Wow. But preacher, I thought you said the Christian life was going to be easy. No, I never said that. My friends, when you became a part of this gathering, you didn't do it so you could be entertained. That's not the reason you did it. You didn't even do it so that you could feel good. Although at times you might, and it's okay to feel good. You know why you did it? You did it because you wanted to bring glory to God. And as a gathering, that is essential in everything we do. And so it's, it's to help others find who that we have found. And that someone has a name. You know what his name is? You do. His name is Jesus. My friends, I want you to know that sometimes uh, serving God isn't going to be fun. That's true, isn't it? Sometimes it's just not fun. Sometimes it's a little bit monotonous doing it over and over and over again, but that's okay. Sometimes it may be a little bit backbreaking. We work hard. Sometimes it's very risky. Sometimes it gets a little bit messy. Ew. Sometimes you have to put up with opposition. Sometimes you have to sacrifice financially hmm. 
Sometimes you may have to go without sleep. Sometimes it's just plain hard. Nevertheless, if we really love God, and we really love people, and we want to glorify His name, we'll do it. That's just the way it is. And so as we face the future, let's put those gifts to work. Let's stand up to our fears. Let's be willing to suffer. And finally, let's learn to really trust God for the results. Because He's got them. God's a winner. You know, I love the book of Esther. I love what she did when she was about to go in and face the king to plead for deliverance of her people. She asked for prayer and she asked for fasting on her behalf. And then she said this, I will go to the king even though it's against the law and if I perish, then I perish. My friends, I want you to know that Esther understood that security was not in herself or her position as queen. It was in God. Esther's faith was not in herself and her abilities or her beauty. It was in God. She knew that her life was in God's hands and she trusted God to take care of her and for that matter, an entire nation that had been threatened to be annihilated. And so because we do live in these perilous times, this gathering asks you to do something pretty simple every single Wednesday. We're called to fast and pray. And so do it. Not for our sake, but for God's sake. We do it because, not because we want to be religious. We do it because we love God and we love people. We do it because God will equip us to bring glory to Him. We do it because nothing, did you hear me? Nothing is too difficult for God. And so do it. Maybe we need to consider a hero of 9-11. A guy by the name of Jeremy Glick was one of the brave survivors, one of those passengers. He didn't survive, he died. But he, he died on that United Flight 93 on September the 11th, 2001. I don't think he woke up that morning saying, boys, today's going to be a great day. I get to die for my nation. Hmm. But he died. In an interview on NBC, this is what his wife said. I believe that he was on the plane for a higher purpose. Hmm. You see, he did not die in vain. Jeremy Glick died a hero. He helped save the lives of hundreds, maybe thousands of lives. Listen, we don't always see the big picture, but I know someone that does. God always sees the big picture. And that's why He would allow a cross for His one and only Son. The bigger picture, you see, was not just death and, and a cross. The bigger picture was resurrection. I'm, I'm currently just finished reading through the, the book of Mark. And yesterday, I was reading about the crucifixion of Jesus, and it left me feeling distraught. It always does. But then this morning, I read and I read about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it brought me hope and joy, saying, wow, there is more. The bigger picture, you see, was not even just resurrection. The bigger picture was salvation in place of damnation for anyone and everyone that would come to Jesus. The bigger picture was the glory of heaven instead of the fire of hell. Jesus did not die in vain. He saved the souls of millions, maybe billions. And so think about it. If Jesus was willing to go to a cross for us, for you and for I, the very least we can do is tell people about Jesus. And so wrapping up, my friends, I want you to know that we can face the future. 
We may be small in number, but we can change the world. Why? Because God is in control, not just of the world, but of us. Our lives are in His hands, and that's exciting. Until the day that we see Jesus face to face, we need, we must live those bold, courageous, and faithful lives. We must put our gifts to work. We must stand up to our fears. We must reach out to those that we love and and be willing to suffer. And of course, we do that by trusting in God's provision, in God's power. That's something that we must understand. You see, we do all those things with God's power, not with ours. Our power is weak. God's is mighty. And so this morning as I'm wrapping up, I want you to know that I've primarily uh, been talking to people that are already Christians. You've already given your life to Christ, and that's good. But I want to close with, a, it's going to be a very short message. You're getting two in one now. It's for those who may not have a relationship with Christ yet. Hmm. I want you to know that you can escape the fire of hell. You really can. You escape that fire by having an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you do it. That's the only way you can do it. So my friends, if that describes you, that you're not a follower of Christ, give your life to Christ. Turn away from your sin. Acknowledge your love for God by both speaking and and living your belief in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Be willing to be baptized into Jesus, to rise to walk with new life and renewed confidence. My friends, you can face the future, no matter what the future may bring. Because when your sins are forgiven, it is great. And you don't have to do it alone because you have the gift of God, the gift of His Spirit living within you to help you walk the world or the road every single day. You can do it with God's help. And then we can and we will change the world for the better. Let's pray. Almighty God, I thank you for the time that we've had to just consider an itty-bitty part of your word. My prayer is not that uh, people would be entertained. My prayer is that people would be drawn to you, that you would be glorified and honored in every single way God I look about these people and I know that they they stood up they said I'm gifted and so God help them to use those gifts greatly help them to do it fearlessly and if it requires suffering let it be so because you will deliver us so God we trust you we love you and we want to honor you and so I offer this In the great and powerful and precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You are dismissed.